kind of farting around with this as I'm burned out tired after uh, fighting my Can-Am. This is a Magnum Energy pure side wave inverter I got a while back. The display doesn't even work on it. So I bought it as um, being defective, but it actually does go on. You just can't tell when it's tripped other than it goes off and I have to disconnect the power, reapply it, and start it up. But, I mean, it has some massive connections on it, which I just clamped here. We got fans on high right now. Put it down low just so we can hear the sucker fire up. It's got the fault again, which it always has on that defective inverter board. So I'm just gonna wait a few seconds. Oh, I was gonna stop video, but usually when that uh, outdoor fan starts is when we're. It's actually going to try to restart, still spin out the code, but when it starts the compressor, it'll actually stop that code and it'll actually go all green in there. And it just did. It's all green. So, on these, you can see the compressor shake when it starts, and that's what it's doing right now. Hot gas line's getting hot. Let's see if it actually ramps up a little bit before it trips that inverter. Or this on low voltage. Oh, and it just stopped. Probably gonna spit out the code. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's five. One, two, three, four. Oh, 53. I forgot what that was. Code 53 is AC voltage or AC under voltage. <laughs> Let's try this again. Change the cord. This is not that heavy of a cord, but it's twice what this is. I told you this thing was pathetic. I mean, that's pathetic. <laughs> Anyway, this is the heaviest cord. I mean, it's not bad, but it's twice what that one was. We'll see if this thing functions. This is a thousand watt inverter. I mean, come close. I heard it click, so there it goes. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, it's gonna be the 53, three reds. AC enter voltage. Dang. So I just got done charging this battery. This battery is actually um, going bad. Uh, my truck was cranking slow. I mean, look at the size of that battery. It should work. Got 12 volts. Oh, it's pulling down already. 7. I think these inverters will run down, you know, a little under 11 volts. Four volts it's going up because of stopping all the fans come on you bastard 12.5 so I didn't get to see what the uh, battery pulled down to but I think it was into the 11s there well, I thought I better just go ahead and check the transformer itself directly to utility power just to make sure nothing no weak link is in there and it actually is ramping up right now. It's starting to go cold here. You can get a compressor just home in there and it's going out a shitload of heat. So it's ramping way up. It's going pretty good. Step that up a little bit. So I can't just eject DC into this from my uh, DC system because that's only about 300 volts, sometimes a little higher. That would be way under what this thing runs at. The only thing is if I injected the DC <laughs> right to the uh, line voltage input, I might try it <laughs> once I get a spare board. <laughs> I don't want to try it on the one you want to have running, but when I get a spare board, I might try injecting DC. It'll just steer through the uh, rectifiers and should power up the deal. I don't see any other power supply that's off of, you know, the 60 hertz AC voltage that, you know, like a little transformer or something. If it had a little transformer going to another little side um, power supply or something, then you couldn't do that. You would need, you know, the, the AC voltage going through there. So it would go through the transformer and everything. But I don't see a transformer on these boards. So, but who knows? Could be mistaken. But I'm going to try it when I get a spare board. 
I might even actually maybe just try it on one of the uh, broken boards, I guess. A lot of the mini split blower motors are usually uh, a DC bus going into them. And then you have like a, approximately 15 volts for the, to power the controls inside the motor. And then you have like a 0 to 6 or whatever. It says to look for 0 to 6.5 volts. It could be a 0 to 5 or whatever signal. I don't know. But it has a variable DC pulse width modulation signal to tell it what speed to run. That'd be kind of cool if that's what this did. But uh, there's uh, four wires. I'll just see what they are. And then it's got the uh, high voltage DC bus goes to this choke. Actually, that's AC voltage. Sorry. Going through that choke and then into the uh, blower motor converts it to DC in there. On the high walls, it's already DC. The circuit board sends high voltage DC to the uh, blower and to the condenser motors too. I'd like to have one of my smaller units running for a place of shelter if the power goes out for a couple hours. So instead of trying to power our, our large unit for an hour, they probably run a small unit like this for a couple hours off of my batteries or off of a generator, which I got to continue that test. Transformer stepping up 110 to 240. That does work if I plug this into the wall, but then when I was plugging this into an inverter, the unit actually did fire up, but then it faults. Of course, I was with the other finicky board. I might try that again with uh, this board. Um, so I have the generator, a little piece of shit generator on it right now. Step up transformer, got 240 awesome volts going into now and it's actually starting to feel cold the pressure's ramping up still at that little shaking low speed actually it's starting to ramp up faster now and getting up to two amps the voltage is pretty steady getting up towards three amps Voltage is still up, starting to piss off. Starting to piss it off. Also, if there was a way to limit this thing in capacity, like say drop it to 80%, 75%, it would run on that. It would probably run, you know, on a inverter as well. Maybe one just a little bigger than that. I'm gonna try my inverter again. I decided to actually hook up the voltmeter and see what the voltage was at the inverter input, those huge lugs. So these are, I thought this might be number eight, might actually just be number 10, might be eight, but it's about seven foot long. And I saw the voltage drop down to 10 volts when the inverter turned off. So it might not have maxed off the inverter, it seems to have tapped off the input. So 13.6 volts, of course that's high because I got the charger also on here, but battery should have uh, be able to hang in there a little bit this is a battery I just took out of my f-150 but it was the engine was cranking slow so that's why I replaced it definitely a weak battery but I hope it would maybe run this so I'll let this thing kick on and see what happens okay we set it again it's just getting ready to start the compressor Lens is wigging out on the Samsung. There we go. Now that shake is actually the compressor. That's what the compressor does every time it starts and every time it drops down to low speed. So and this is already sagging to 12.2 volts at the battery. At the battery. 11.9. That thing's only up to 1.9. Getting up to 2 amps over on the AC unit. Oh, this battery's just so toast. Just, it's gone. That's okay. All right. Well, I might. Shit. Since I have this all ready, I might just have to wire this up to the battery in my truck. <laughs> just gotta know. Okay. Time for desperate measures. Just put it on the truck battery. That's a brand new battery. Compressor is getting ready to start. We're at 12.6 volts. Compressor is started. Now this is going to drop down a little bit, of course. I'm slowly voltage of the battery down to full, you know, to a pretty good load. You can already feel the air starting to get cool. There's the amperage at a 
two 30 volt input, 1.7, 1.8, two, this is when uh, the voltage really started dropping on that battery I pulled out of my truck. Already it would be in the 11s, it were 12.3. It's kind of holding actually. 3.2 amps, and it's ramping up the compressor. 12.2 volts. I think that battery's gonna hang in there. So it actually was the battery voltage dropping on my old battery and not the actual inverter itself failing, tripping or anything. Almost a full output on this thing. <laughs> Dropped down the oh, and it got to 11.9 and tripped. Dang it. That sucker was right there too. To try it again with the truck running maybe. I started the truck and then this thing still had no power. And my little connection actually failed and just popped right out. So I kind of shoved it on there again. I'm still not wanting to just clamp it onto the battery without a way to just connect this fucking real quick. But you see this thing rated 97 amps. 97 amps. So it's probably going to fail this connection again. We'll see. I just want it to run just for a minute. Hey, this is take two off the truck battery. Shake, shake. Compressors. Starting to ramp up. Actually, uh, the voltage went down into the 11s with it checking at the battery posts. <laughs> so that means it definitely was sagging the battery down. Should be a fairly high output alternator, being that this has a tow package and everything. But let's see what happens here. Volts 12.8, get up to 3.9. amps, compressors mostly the way ramped up. Just starting to drop down to 12.8. That's not too bad. Let's see if this connection pops off though, like a freaking fuse, man. 12.7, and that's at 4.85. This is usually where it fails. And this fan's probably running balls out on this thing, I'm sure. 12.5 volts, 13. Oh, it must have tripped. Dang, it was right there. I don't have a fault, so it must have actually turned the power off and back. Oh, look, there it went. It's off. The inverter actually shut off. So that's still connected. That's actually the inverter tripping at that point. It's pretty warm already. So, okay. It's a little much for this inverter. Initially, that battery over there was... Uh, that battery over there it wasn't enough but saw that the voltage maintained this time and still tripped the inverter but it didn't trip until it got up to full speed have just a little larger of an inverter would probably run this thing you have to say that's kind of cool though got the uh, 12 volt to inverter an inverter to step up transformer the twist lock 230 volt now, if I had the F-150 power boost, I just plug this right into the back of that truck. And it has, uh, the large one's like 7,200 watts. It would easily run that AC. It would run two or three of those ACs off the F-150 hybrid power boost. So just to give you an idea of what kind of power that thing has. Pretty awesome. Okay, continued the next day. And you know what really crazy thing I'm doing right now? Really crazy. I'm sending DC power into that VRP. <laughs> and try and do it so it trips real easy. So I got a 110 volts AC stepping up to 230 volts AC going into the variable frequency drive. I'm only using it for the rectifier. I have the DC output plugged into this cable. It's still all grounded. And oh, and I see some shit. Uh oh, that's not good. Something's getting hot. I spoke too soon. What is it? This? Okay. Oh, the choke. The choke doesn't like DC. Fuck. So, uh, that's a no-go. Uh, circuit board was on. The thermostat was powered up. That circuit board is powered up. Everything powers off of the uh, DC as I suspected it did because like I was saying earlier in the clip, I don't see any like AC uh, step-down transformers on here. Um, to, to, to control 
you know, the controls part, you know, it looks like it's probably switching off of the high voltage bus. And it, evidently it does because I put DC in here, DC through everything, through the filters, through everything. Um, and it, it actually powered up. So, but man, I got this good and hot though. I want to let that cool off. Shitty. Examine it, it possibly the blower motor because I'm thinking the blower motor would probably run just put DC in just like I've already done with ECM motors No problem. I believe that's pretty much just is a permanent magnet ECM motor electronics built in But it does have this external filter Did not like it at all Kind of interesting so uh I just measured the voltage going into that toroid there and it's like the AC voltage at my house about 247 or so it's pretty high here sometimes and then I checked the output going to the fan motors like 215 or something so that might actually be wired as a regular uh, transformer it does say transformer on it <laughs> behind that plastic there so it might not just be a choke so they're stepping it down still might be okay just to put a DC straight in there. I don't want to really fry one of these motors that uh, I don't really have extras of. So I could try uh, just injecting DC into here now to see if this unit you know, would actually fire up the compressor. I think I'll do that. This is some serious Frankenstein shit now. So take two. DC is only going into the inverter board. And then uh, I'm going to have regular power going into the fan watch your smoke boom okay so nothing there power that up so that is DC powering this and this and this all that stuff there goes the blower Toroid's cooled off a little bit it's not burning my hand quite anymore I mean it's pretty hot still about 150 Blower hasn't kicked on yet. I do have a plug in. Yep. Uh, I gotta see what's going on here. Alright, something's pissed off. Okay. When I had it hooked up that way, uh, I was actually getting a DC over voltage code. I never see that code 54. The DC going in there. It didn't. I don't think it was doing that when I had the uh, motor and everything connected at once on that, but I think it was the transformer. Everything it was actually probably loading down. I mean, you saw that this was getting hot and starting to smoke the plastic. So I'm sure it loaded down the DC voltage and it didn't have a fault. It was starting to like, it was actually running. I just saw the, the puffs start to come off the plastic, so I turned it off. So all hooked up back to normal now and it's ramping up and running fine. Um, I went in and just disconnected this took off the you know, put the DC in there for right now I'll probably do that on the other unit and what I'll do on it is maybe experiment sending DC straight into the motor uh, and see if it fucks it up hopefully it doesn't but that other unit actually yeah this is gonna work because uh, I think if I put a lower voltage DC into this it, it's not gonna um, trip and I'm Usually running my batteries closer to 300, where um, 247 ish rectified, it's over 330 volts DC. So I could probably find a sweet spot to run one of these off of a battery pack that I'm charging off the sun discreetly and isolated from all my other batteries. So if I get the bottom section to run without the blower on DC, and I could get one of those blower motors and a high wall to run off of that same DC bus. I think I'll be, I think we'll be golden, man. Because that's one of my things is I want to make a small unit here run, like off grid, just to see if I can do it. Anyway, it's got this working right now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, got a couple more of these boards I want to test.